Alright the squad, how are we all today? It's Ring of the Hawk Season 4, the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company, at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J.O.B. to the H.A.W.K. As we start edging towards the end of the season, I realise that the shove its own is pretty empty. Not so many of you are asking to see the bad wrestling. So I thought I'd change all of that today, because I think this head scratcher will definitely end up shoving it. Alright, it's the maestro, was he the worst on the show? The Maestro did some J.O.B.s in WCW before he was the Maestro. Instead, at the time, he was Robert Eagle. Not as good as the Hawk. He did get to wrestle Sting, so he's got that going for him. Fast forward to 1999, and every time I saw this man appear on WCW telly, I was stunned that he was getting this TV time. He didn't feel like he fit. It was a jarring gimmick, and he looked like a gone-off version of Ric Flair. Turns out that the Maestro is the great-nephew of Gorgeous George, so that probably tells you all you need to know, and explains my confusion. Bear with me as I explain how this came about. So he owned the rights to the Gorgeous George name, and Randy Savage asked him if his brother Lanny Poffo could be Gorgeous George on WCW. The Maestro agreed to this, only for Poffo to decide that he preferred sitting on his ass getting paid. He would not be Gorgeous George. Instead, the name was given to Randy Savage's girlfriend. Allegedly, the Maestro was livid, so Bischoff gave him a job, and the Maestro was born. He would be half Gorgeous George and half a musical moron. He debuts being lowered from the ceiling playing a piano in a tent. What was it with Russo White to lower people from ceilings? Right, have we got all that out of the way? Good, now shove it. Match 1, Thunder. Dale Torborg, before he was the demon, he is the MVP, versus the maestro. There's something I find really sad about this piano music playing whilst he miserably walks to the ring. It's like he knows he's screwed. Life is unfair. They lock up, Torborg quickly falls over in the corner and it's already a mess just 10 seconds in. They try another lock up and the maestro is able to hit some arm drags and a drop toe hold. A third lock up and the maestro with a go behind takedown. The fake crowd noise is hurting my ears. Torborg finally does something for snap me and a boot to the back. Maestro battles back to his feet and drops him with a back suplex. They get up quickly but maestro drops him again quickly with a back elbow and a wacky elbow drop. Torborg slows him down with an eyelash rake. And there's the rock bottom for the three. Two debuts in this match, and I can't ever imagine wanting to see either of them ever again. It's an S. Match 2, Thunder. The Maestro versus Norman Smiley. Maestro does a forward roll and celebrates that. They trade standing holds over and over again. Smiley eventually takes him down and dodges a monkey flip attempt. Not sure what happens next, it looks clunky, but Maestro also manages a knockdown. He quickly hits the backdrop suplex special for a two. Smiley almost manages a sunset flip, but Dick Flair hits him with an ass drop. Now a back body drop. Smiley fires up with a headbutt and a bunch of arm ringers. He's feeling this and hits the wind up slam. The maestro drags him outside the ring and tries to throw him into the ring pole, but he can't even manage that. Smiley manages to reverse a DDT into the Norman Conquest and maestro taps out. <sighs> Why even bother? This sucks on Isiaki's ass, isn't it? Match 3, Thunder, the maestro. Why are his entrances so expensive and then he gets in the ring and he's nothing? Versus Prince Iakea, I wrote Ikea. I'd rather be there than that's saying something. Maestro does a taunt and pays for it for dropkick. Maestro waves his fingers in the prince's face and again pays for it. The pace increases with a bunch of chain wrestling. Maestro manages to back him into the corner and starts smacking him one. That fires up Iakea who returns to the corner battering. Maestro plays possum and throws him into the corner. The prince hits a drop kick and a bat body drop. Maestro comes back with a knee lift and the maestro puts on an STF. And he gets a tap out win. But he's a bad winner and he continues the attack after the bell. Well, it's a win. But it's not very exciting or interesting. It's a D. Match 4, Thunder. Hardcore match. The maestro versus Brian Nobbs with Jimmy Hart. Maestro celebrates too soon and pays the trash can to the head. The maestro is getting mashed with weapons over and over again. Nobbs takes the maestro to Pity City. Maestro manages to block a chair shot with his feet. He seems a bit unsure with the chair in his hands, but he does figure it out eventually. Randomly, Maestro tries a cradle pin for a two. Jimmy Hart then causes a distraction so Nobbs can smash him with a trash can. Now, it's worth noting, WCW weren't very good at doing hardcore matches. It was always just mindless weapon shots with no interesting spots. Nobbs climbs the ropes of a trash can. Norman Smiley appears and takes out Jimmy Hart with a violin case which distracts Nobbs. Smiley also hits him with a pipe. Maestro then finds the pile of bodies and makes a Jack Knight cover for the three. He isn't going to do anything cool, is he? It's just not good. It's an S. Match 5, Thunder. The Maestro versus Evan Courageous with Medusa. 
Maestro attacks from behind. He frantically scrambles around the ring but can't do anything and gets hip tossed. Maestro dumps his Napier Fear and hides on the outside of the ring. Courageous dives on him and almost overshoots him. In the ring, the Maestro scrambles around more, but he's snap slammed. Maestro responds for back suplex for a two count. He can't hit a power bomb and he's almost rolled up. Courageous comes close with another roll up. Maestro boots him in the ribs with anger. Evan Courageous then slips out of another back suplex and lands a diving forearm. He can't keep going as the Maestro crushes him with a cab driver slam. The commentary laugh at his weird choking instead of making a pin. Medusa on the ring apron kisses the Maestro. Courageous also gets a kiss and the Maestro gets a roll up pin. Why would Courageous want a kiss just after she kissed somebody else? He looked really into it too. Well, he might be, but I sure wasn't. It's an ass. Check out this hilarious wacky Nitro segment. Symphony, who is Ryan Shamrock, thinks that she's got a date with the Maestro, but it's actually David Flair in a wig and he's hogtied the Maestro inside the piano. Hilarious. Match 6, Thunder, the Maestro vs Kaz Hayashi. Maestro quickly delivers a clunky small package for a 2. Kaz reverses an arm drag into a fireman's carry and a drop kick. Maestro plays possum and throws Hayashi into the corner. He drops some elbows with happiness. A simple stomp gets him a 2 count. The Maestro starts dominating until David Flair marches down with a crowbar. Kaz starts using a speed to hit a drop kick. Then there's a ref bump. Kaz puts on a sleeper. David Flair climbs into the ring and tries to hit the Maestro, but misses. Flair chases the Maestro up the ramp just as the referee wakes up to count the Maestro out. Why is this still going on? It's terrible. It would be an achievement to do something even remotely interesting at this point. Match 7, Nitro. Backstage open challenge. The Maestro, who's looking for a fight, but bites off more than he can chew when he finds Jerry Flynn, who knocks him out with a kick. David Flair has kidnapped Symphony. What a feud we have going here. Match 8, Nitro, the artist formerly known as Prince Ikea with, pa <laughs> with Paisley versus the Maestro with Symphony. At least WCW put a lot of effort into these entrances. If Maestro was wearing Ikea's shirt, he'd look like Gangrel. Maestro hits a spinebuster and starts trying to conduct the crowd. That allows the Prince to wake up, he double legs Maestro and headbutts him in the nutsack. The ladies climb onto the ring apron. They slap the men. Prince rolls up the Maestro and it's over. Oh, and a wild slap nut appears. Hey, Jeff Jarrett. He decks them both with a guitar. Now, then, and forever. I have to say, I think he did the hawk a favour here. The entrances were three times longer than the match. Match 9, Nitro, the Maestro versus Evan Courageous. I guess he's ditched the side chick. Evan drop toe holds him and hits a springboard crossbody. Then he scores a float over in the corner into nine punches before getting a stun gun. Maestro desperately contemplates what he can do next to avoid going in the zone. Unfortunately, he thinks it's another back suplex. There's a jawbreaker though, that's new. Courageous almost beats him with a sunset flip before being smacked back down. Courageous then blocks his next move in the corner and nails a snap slam for a two. Followed by a power bomb. Evan Courageous, the powerhouse. Symphony tries to distract him on the apron. She goes down, which distracts Evan. The Maestro hits a running knee from behind and surprisingly, that's the three. Symphony was faking it. She's fine. It's an S. Match 10, Thunder. The Maestro versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Surely the Maestro is screwed here. Maestro can't knock him down. He tries once, twice, three times, but the third is turned into a side slam. Maestro stops his next move with a kick to the head, but Bigelow counters this dive. Big body slam of authority now. How does he make that look so good? Bigelow looks to dive. Symphony climbs into the ring trying to stop his dive. Bam Bam just says screw it and hits diving headbutt to Maestro. Suddenly, loads of people are in the ring. The ref is rightfully distracted. Bigelow smashes a bottle. Canyon hits Bigelow from behind with a belt. And the Maestro has beaten Bigelow in one minute. Horrendous. Match 11, Nitro. Shoot fight. The Maestro. This piano music and his sad face. I just can't take this much longer. This is the most depressing day of my life and I watched every single Jeff Jarrett ref bump in TNA. He takes on Tank Abbott. Maestro is busy conducting the audience when Abbott smacks him down. The bell rings and the Maestro has been knocked out in 10 seconds. You couldn't make it up. Oh well, on to the next match. Match 12, Thunder, hardcore match. The Maestro will once again take on Norman Smiley with many side chicks. Apparently the Maestro is upset that Norman has outshowed him. How about he actually wins a proper match definitively? Maestro jumps Norman whilst he dances with the girls. 
Norman decks him in the head of a chair. Maestro reverses an Irish whip and lightly sends screaming Norman into a ladder. He starts chasing Norman up the ramp, who casually walks away. Maestro kicks the chair into his face. Norman keeps walking and finds a trash can to use. They head backstage and Maestro sends him into a bunch of trash. Out of nowhere, Norman hits a wind-up slam through the table. It's like it didn't even happen. Maestro's up again, so Norman drops him again. A coffin appears. Norman almost crawls in there and then he faints in terror and the Maestro is... <laughs> it's the demon. It's also an S. Match 13, Nitro. Buff Bagwell versus the Maestro. He's in a bad mood. He storms to the ring, but immediately Bagwell net breaks him. Maestro headbutts him in the gut and hits the atomic drop. Bagwell blocks his next move and the corner hits a splash from the middle rope. Bagwell is hitting on Symphony. Maestro tries to charge Bagwell from behind, but instead he takes out his girl. It looks kind of brutal to be fair. Bagwell celebrates that in the ring whilst the Maestro jumps him from behind. The Maestro has gone insane. It's the most intensity we've seen all video. But then some music hits. It's the cat. He screams a bunch of nonsense as the camera cuts back to the ring to see Bagwell hitting the blockbuster. And it's over. The cat says he lost the bet and by losing this, as a punishment, he will have to listen to some new music. Not sure what the music was because of the WWE Network, but it sure angered the maestro who kills the referee. I guess it's a D for character work. A little bit more interesting at least. I guess something happened. Well a feud started up because the cat said he's friends with James Brown. Nobody believed it's true, but then James Brown literally turned up on the pay-per-view. But because it seemed so silly and unbelievable, nobody watched it. The Maestro was one of the many disbelievers. Match 14, Nitro. The cat versus the Maestro who has a wacky new hair job. The cat quickly hits him with a DDT. The Maestro looks done already as a dancing elbow drop connects. The cat starts playing music on a stereo, which is three counts music for some reason. The cat double chops him in the throat. The maestro starts flipping out at the disgusting music. The ref gets distracted by literally nothing as the maestro smashes the CD player into his face. That's the three. This is unbearable. Why is any of this happening? I can't explain it. Match 14, Thunder. Oh my god, final match. Finally. The maestro. He actually cuts a promo before his final match. It seems he's trying to reinvent himself and calling himself the Stro. Yeah, great reinvention. Versus the cat once again. He misses a punch and gets a cat's clothesline. Cat hurls him across the ring by his haircut. 20 seconds are now wasted as the cat's shoes have come off and 20 seconds is a long time in a maestro match. That's like 10% of the match. Anyway, the cat hits a scoop slam but misses a wacky elbow drop. It doesn't help the maestro who falls headfirst after a flapjack. The cat and Symphony start arguing over the CD player again. Maestro shoves the referee which costs him as he gets kicked in the gut and hit with the CD player. Your winner is the cat. Game over. One minute and 30 seconds in case you were wondering. It's hard to describe the emotions I have during this video. I've never seen a wrestler so dead on arrival. They put zero effort into helping him. It seemed like even booking him on the show was a waste of time. I felt immense sorrow hearing that sad piano music. The dark gloomy arena. His little red face. The dying company. It was almost like this run summed up the sad end to WCW. On top of that, the maestro is apparently a super nice dude in real life. I'm sure he could have done a lot more. He wasn't new to this business, he was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Well, I guess at least he accomplished more than any of us ever will, so I hope he's happy. But I'm sure not happy, this run was appalling. Possibly the worst I've ever seen. The longest match went 5 minutes, and most were only 1 minute. He had no direction and could hardly hit a move. It's a real head scratch that WCW put so much effort into his entrances, some of them must have cost them a fortune. You don't do that for a nobody, so why did they? Who knows? But what I do know is that the maestro is going in the zone because his piano playing made me groan. He looked like a rip-off wrestler like he was the stone, and if you don't agree with that, I'll take you to a desert and leave you all alone.